All right, I want to have everybody start with a big, deep breath. Just be present, feel that intentionality, et cetera. And now I want you to think about where that last breath of air came from. How did you access that, that breath? What supply chain did that breath come from? Who did you procure it from? It's a ludicrous question, right? Because no matter how wealthy you are or how modest your living is, all you have to do is take a breath and you own the air you breathe. Now think about the last breath, rather the last drink of water that you had and the supply chain that that water came through, whether you got it from a government supply or you bought it in a bottle. In those cases, you have no transparency to what is in that water, what's in that bottle, the quality of that water, where it's been, et cetera. And of course, most of the people in this room have access to great water all the time. What we did is set out to change the fundamental human relationship to water. And we're doing that with a, the product we call Source, which is a hydro panel, quite literally a thing that looks like a solar panel, but instead of making electricity, it makes fine drinking water with sunlight and air only. So we set out to really, truly perfect water for every person, every place. And that's, of course, a highly aspirational view. But our technology entitles us to that aspiration. Now, of course, there are three fundamental challenges with water. Broken infrastructure. Just in the US, there are 750 water main breaks a day, which corresponds to about the same number of boil advisory. We all know in our hometowns and the cities we live in that there are infrastructural challenges all the time. And it's one of the reasons why we tend to buy bottled water to avoid the potential uh, you know, of getting sick and so on from the water that we're drinking. Lack of transparency. How do you know what's in the water that you're drinking? The young woman right there who's taking the drink of water out of the bottle right there. How, does, how do you know what's in the water that you're drinking? And then, of course, non-convenience. In one case, it's just going to the store and buying bottles, which is inconvenient. But, of course, if you're a, an African woman, the in African continent alone, about 40 billion hours a year are spent fetching water by mostly women and girls. That's non-convenience, right? So how do we fundamentally change that? With Source, and as you can see, this hydro panel is beautiful. It's elegantly designed, and it's truly a solar water source. So there's no pipe connection going in, no electrical connection going in. You put two of these panels on your roof, and you own the drinking water, your cooking water, going forward. This works in even the driest of places. We're, we're based in the Sonoran Desert in Scottsdale, Arizona. For those of you familiar with the American Southwest, it's an incredibly dry desert. And yet, these panels work beautifully there. They produce pure water that is then mineralized so that the water that comes out has a high pH and tastes great. And in, on any one of your homes, having these panels, source panels, would be a luxury item because the quality of the water produced is as good as the top water brands in the world. And those same panels at schools without water or orphanages or the other institutions that we're currently at across the globe, those are impact-related devices. So the ubiquity of what source represents is something that is effectively going from something that is scarce and hard to, to acquire to water abundance. And we know that we're doing what we think we're doing because every panel everywhere in the world is connected through a mesh network to a Cassandra database sitting on Amazon Web Services so we can see that we're doing what we say we're doing in all the places we're in, which I'll tell you more about here in just a moment. Now, how does this thing work? It sounds like magic. All of us have in our daily lives experience with materials that really like water. So think about the last time you left a lid off of a sugar bowl. And that sugar bowl, the sugar, probably you started to notice got clumpy, right? Or maybe a little bit soggy. And that's because the sugar is absorbing water from the atmosphere, and it would do that under a huge range of atmospheric conditions. It's the same reason why you don't go jogging in a cotton shirt, because it'll get damp and stay damp. So you can imagine engineered materials that do exactly that same thing, but much, much more quickly, and with the right amount of so-called binding energy so that you're only holding onto the water just strongly enough. 
And so once we have that, then we can actually run a thermodynamic cycle using sunlight to produce pure water. And independent of how clean the air is, pure water. We then run that through a mineral block, which provides the calcium and magnesium and brings the pH up. And then each panel provides water at a 40 PSI pressure to an in-home tap or to your refrigerator for your ice maker and so on. So you go from inconvenience, lack of transparency, and broken infrastructure to owning your water at your home independent of all infrastructure. And knowing in real time through the app that we have that in fact your water is perfect. We've already talked about this a little bit, but just hitting on the, these various sources traditionally for your drinking water. Your municipal supply is very low cost, which makes it great. The challenge, though, is that this stuff is really heavy and hard to move around. So it turns out that about half the world's population lives within three kilometers of a surface body of fresh water. And only 10% of the world's population lives more than 10 kilometers away from a surface body of fresh water. The reason for that is that infrastructure is hard. It's hard to move this stuff uphill. It's hard to keep it clean, et cetera. So that's why people move to things like our reverse osmosis, where you're starting to take out some of the things that could be in your water. But of course, that's wasteful. About four gallons, so let's say about 80% uh, of the water that you would uh, otherwise be using is going down the drain in order to keep that RO moving. And then, of course, bottled water, which we know how much plastic waste that represents, and we know how much CO2 that represents. Now, source, on the other hand, is convenient. It's installed at your home. You have it exactly where you're going to use it. It's renewable, meaning there is nothing but sunlight and air that is powering what source does. Ultra high quality, ultra efficient. We're talking about efficiencies of going from sunlight to water that are equivalent to the best solar for electricity, photons to electrons, uh, in the world. Secure, it's at your home. And so it's just sort of this virtuous cycle of having water ownership and water independence that fundamentally changes your life. I have source in my home, and my kids use it to fill up their water bottles for school before, at, at home before school. We use it to make coffee and everything else, and all of our drinking water needs. It's a fundamental shift for our family as it is for anybody else in the US and around the world that has source. The way we've architected these systems is that they actually can go into arrays of one to as many panels are needed for that, that place. So what that means is that we can then start to install across a huge range of applications. So in the upper left, you see a luxury home in Scottsdale, Arizona, that is now owns its water. We're at schools now in three separate countries. And these schools are, of course, at different scales, different number of children in each school. And of course, we put in the, the size of array that's needed. In the upper right-hand corner, you see the disaster relief re uh, commentary there. And we responded to Puerto Rico. Hurricane Irma went into Puerto Rico, leveled its infrastructure, and we've been sending panels into there. So again, that, that ability to be independent of infrastructure means that even when the worst disasters hit, there's no electricity, no, wa no potable water to be had, we can put panels into place and people immediately begin to have access to great water. And of course, across from offices to governments, and as you see in the lower left, even wildlife support in the middle of the desert, where animals that uh, have intermittent water, su water supply now have a great source of water all the time. Every one of these panels is responding back to our NOC, our Network Operating Center, based in Scottsdale, Arizona. And so we can see in real time and learn in dog years how quickly we are evolving the product to be one that is truly world class and one that can operate under a huge range of conditions. Every two panels offsets enough CO2 to displace a vehicle. And each panel is offsetting about 35,000 bottles of plastic bottles in its lifetime. You're talking about a massive impact to the uh, amount of waste that people are generating in their drinking water. Now, look at the distribution that we're now in. From equatorial jungles to Arabian desert to 
uh, Southeast Asian uh, environments where they have meters of rainfall per year to the Sonoran Desert, to uh, high altitude, all the way down to the lowest point on Earth at the Dead Sea, and functioning across that entire range. So whether we're talking about on the Palm Dubai or on the, on the roof of the palace, King Abdullah's palace in Jordan, or in northern Lebanon up against the Syrian border where we're supporting an orphanage and schools there, zero mass and source is fundamentally changing people, people's lives across a huge range of, of places. Of course, for those of you that are entrepreneurs in the room, uh, I think something that's an important message to take away is that you cannot build a great company without great partners. And no matter how great your technology is, no matter how great your investors are, in the absence of great partners, you will not succeed going into various places in the world. And we've been, managed to develop a great set of partners between USAID, who's funded our work in the Middle East, the Asian Development Bank, uh, who's funding work for us in, across Southeast Asia, the Royal Hashemite Court of Jordan, who was one of the earliest adopters. I founded this company in November of 2014, and I'd met the, uh, the king just about a few months before that, went and visited with him, and we established a pilot that we delivered on about six months after the founding of the company. So extraordinarily powerful partner in that one. Clinton Foundation, Duke Energy, which is the largest utility in the United States, has funded panels for us in Ecuador, and as well as uh, work that we're doing on the research side in North Carolina. And then, of course, the Rene Mawad Foundation in Lebanon is really helping us to execute across that, that country, where they have, of course, a big influx of Syrian refugees. Uh, and you're not talking about a place that has a lot of extra resources to take on those folks. And so the water stress issues are, are substantial. So across all those partners, the takeaway is the better the partners, the better off you are in terms of getting to the scale that you want to get at in the nearer term and learning quickly. So, I want to end just on a broader note, which is to say, the way that we approached the human condition, the, the, the challenge that is, people do not own their drinking water, that there is a challenge around the infrastructure that people are relying on to have drinking water. The fact that one person dies every 10 seconds on this planet from waterborne illness, right? The challenges associated with us not having transparency and knowledge about the water that we're, that we're consuming. Not the symptoms, but rather the, the fundamentals of the challenge, which led us to saying it needs to be infrastructure free. It needs to be absence so that we're not cleaning up dirty water. It needs to be in the absence of all infrastructure. And then finally, biasing towards action. Let's just go do it. This is going to be a hard problem. Let's just go figure it out. And listening to the data all the way along the way. The data drives us to the solution, not the initial idea about what the solution is driving us to the solution. So define the problem, bias towards action, listen to the data, and arrive at the ultimate solution. So with that, we are just at the beginning of fundamentally changing the human relationship to water. Thank you very much.